So, let's ask women, do you like to receive flowers? I like like a plant, not just a flower. Of a plant. Do you want my plant? Because I think I water it like once a year. Right. Okay, we asked 500 women and 400 of them said yes they do. Now we asked 300 men, do you, do you like to receive dead plants that have no hope of living and are just going to decay? And 20 of them said yes they did. Obviously we don't want to do a hypothesis test here, we can tell those proportions are very different. So we're going to talk about doing a confidence interval. Now, as my lovely assistant teacher will show you, here is the graph that we used to have. And as she points to the proportion in the middle, in the middle of the graph where she's pointing, as she's, my lovely assistant is pointing, to the middle of the graph there is our proportion and the standard error that she is pointing to, that she's pointing to the standard error there. That's for one sample. How does this change if we're talking about two samples? Let me remind you the way we used to do it with means. We did a difference of the means and then our t-score and here we had our standard error for both of them together. In our case, for our confidence interval, we're going to do the difference between the two sample proportions just like we did x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus or minus, is it going to be z or t? It's always z for proportions. Proportions and t never mix. It's always Z. We are going to find our standard error here. What is it going to be? Well, you would think p hat 1, 1 minus p hat 1 over n1 square root. Of, that's the standard error for the first group. And p hat 2, 1 minus p hat 2 over n2. That's the standard error for the second group. The, oh, well, I need the square root. And because we're subtracting right here, we might be tempted to subtract right here, but there's a problem with this. This doesn't work because you cannot you cannot add or subtract or subtract. Standard deviations. We saw this rule when we tried to do that with means, and it doesn't work. But there is hope, because what we can do is... But you can add, add or subtract variances. So this right here, I'm going to square it and square it. Because I have squared those, it goes away, and it goes away. Squaring it right here makes that negative become positive, but that leaves us with variance, and we don't want variance when we're left, so we are going to do a square root of the whole thing. Here is your equation for a confidence interval. In our case of the men versus women, this confidence interval would look like this. So for a 95% confidence interval, we would plug in 400 out of 500 for our first proportion, 20 out of 300 for our other proportion, and we plug those guys in here, and it should remind you of how the means work. S1 squared over N, here's the S when we're talking about proportions over the N. We add those together. It comes out to be 0.68 and 0.77. Now, I know many of you are going to be concerned. Could I actually type this in my calculator correctly? So to find out, my wife is going to try to put this thing on the clear what I just did. In the calculator, while I'm going to write it on the board, we're going to have a contest and see who can get it done first. Where do I start? Um, so, as you can tell by my poor wife who is furiously trying to type this into the, the calculator, this is difficult to do. In the homework, you will have to do this. By the way, I've got a minus here because we're finding the lower bound first. Change this to be a plus to get the positive bound. Now, Many of you like to do pieces of this and then put those in, and that's fine. You can do that if that works for you. But if you want to put it all in your calculator like this, you can. There's no way on an exam that you're going to do this the first time without making mistakes. In the homeworks, you get some extra tries. You can see what you got wrong and ask other people. So 
my promise to you is on the exams, you will not have to do this. I'm going to make the same promise when we talk about hypothesis testing. But you might have to look at a bunch of different equations and identify which one is the right one for you to be using. Or, so there are ways that I can still test whether you know this equation without having you type it in because Tisha is still working on it. Oh, got it. And did you cheat by looking at my equation on the board? Oh, yeah. Woo! That was the <laughs> look. Did you see that? It's called the look. Oh, thank you, dear. For you, sweetie. Uh huh. <laughs> he wishes I'd take it out of his office. It might live. I kept it alive. 